Hey everyone and welcome back. We are diving into a listener request today and a really interesting one, imposter syndrome, specifically how it might relate to Kamala Harris's career. It feels like something we can all kind of relate to on some level, right? That feeling of, wait, am I actually good enough to be here? But take that feeling and multiply it by like a million when you think about someone in the white hot spotlight of national politics. Mm -hmm. And well, that's exactly what we're going to try to unpack today. Yeah, no, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it really gets to the heart of leadership and how we perceive ourselves in these positions of power. How do you make decisions when you're constantly second guessing yourself? Fascinating stuff. It really is. So where do we even begin with something like this? Imposter syndrome, it's so internal and nuanced. And then on top of that, we're talking about someone as high profile as the vice president. Right, right. Take her early political career in San Francisco, for example. Her connection with former Mayor Willie Brown is something that comes up a lot. And even Brown himself has said it played a part in her political rise. Yeah, he's been pretty open about, you know, using his influence to help her along the way. Exactly. And look, mentors and support networks are obviously super common in politics. That's just how it works. But for someone who might already be wired to experience imposter syndrome, that kind of boost could actually make those feelings of not being good enough even stronger. Because it makes you question everything, right? Like, did I actually earn my position or did someone kind of hand it to me? Exactly. It feeds into that inner voice saying, you're not really qualified. You're just lucky. Which is interesting because from the outside, Kamala Harris, she's a rising star, ambitious, clearly very capable. So it's not like her achievements aren't real. Right. And that's the thing about imposter syndrome, isn't it? It can totally coexist with outward success. I mean, you can achieve incredible things and still feel like a fraud deep down. It's that disconnect. Like your achievements are over here, but your own self-belief is way over there in the distance and you just can't seem to close that gap. So true. And this actually makes me think about another thing that the source material brought up, which is Kamala Harris's laughter. I mean, people have called it a cackle and some see it as a sign of being uncomfortable, especially when she's asked tough questions. Yeah, her laugh has definitely been talked about. And it is interesting because laughter can mean so many things, right? Sometimes it's just a way to diffuse tension or buy yourself a moment to think. But thinking about it through the lens of imposter syndrome, it could also be a bit of a defense mechanism. Like when you're feeling insecure and you laugh to kind of deflect from those feelings? Yeah, like a shield almost to sort of cover up that feeling of being exposed. And this actually links to another aspect of her public image. There's this whole thing about her using word salad. Word salad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not talking about everyday conversations here, yeah. right? We're talking about moments when she's expected to be really clear and authoritative about super complex issues. So how does word salad, how does that fit into this imposter syndrome thing? So word salad, it's basically when someone uses a lot of unnecessarily complicated words or phrases, making things overly complex and kind of hard to follow. And one way to look at it is that sometimes when people struggle with imposter syndrome, they overcompensate. They feel this need to prove how smart they are, to sound more knowledgeable than they feel, so that they use really big words and complicated language. It's like they're trying to hide behind those big words, hoping no one will realize they might actually be in over their heads. Yeah, exactly. It's not about actual intelligence. It's about how intelligent you appear to be, you know, and that fear of someone calling you out. That's a big part of it. It makes you wonder if you're dealing with a constant internal battle, that voice telling you you're not good enough. It would make sense that it comes out in how you communicate. But it's important to remember, we're talking about observations here, not a clinical diagnosis or anything. Of course, yeah. We're right. not trying to actually diagnose anyone here. We're just trying to understand. But what you're saying is these things we see from the outside, her laughter, her communication style, those things could potentially be indicators of a deeper internal struggle with imposter syndrome. Exactly. And it just gets even more interesting when you think about everything that comes with her role. I mean, she's the first female vice president, the first black vice president, the first Asian American vice president. The weight of history is literally on her shoulders. Talk about pressure. <laughs> All those eyes on you, the constant scrutiny, the feeling that you have to prove yourself. And uh, imagine you're already dealing with imposter syndrome. All of that, the pressure, the scrutiny, it just amplifies those feelings of inadequacy, probably by like a thousand. So then it becomes this question of, if you're always battling that voice inside your head, that self-doubt, how does that internal pressure, that feeling of being an imposter, how does that actually impact the way someone leads? Well, one of the most obvious ways is in how they make decisions. 
Because if someone is constantly struggling with imposter syndrome, they tend to second guess themselves a lot. You know, like every decision becomes this huge internal debate. And that can lead to a lot of hesitation, going back and forth on things, maybe even avoiding making those tough calls altogether. Because you're so afraid of making the wrong move, right? Yeah. I mean, if you already doubt yeah. your own judgment, every decision feels like it could blow up in your face. Yeah. It's this fear of being found out, right? Like, what if I make a mistake and everyone realizes I don't actually know what I'm doing? And for a leader, that's a recipe for disaster. Because inconsistency breeds uncertainty, right? If a leader can't make up their mind, it makes it really hard for the people around them to trust their judgment, to trust them to lead. It's like that saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And it makes me think about another point, which is how imposter syndrome can make leaders really risk averse. Because mm -hmm. you'd think someone with that much power would actually feel more comfortable taking risks, but it seems like the opposite is often true. You'd think so, right. But it makes sense when you think about it. Because that fear of failure, that fear of being exposed as a fraud, it can be totally paralyzing. So instead of being bold, instead of pushing for change, leaders who are struggling with these feelings might just stick with what's safe, even if it means missing out on opportunities that could actually make things better. So it's not just about avoiding negative outcomes, it's also about potentially missing out on really positive ones, because you're too afraid to rock the boat. It's like imposter syndrome shrinks your world a little bit, you know, makes you less likely to reach for those big goals because you don't really believe you can achieve them anyway. Right, exactly. And that can be especially detrimental in a field like politics, where taking those calculated risks, making those tough calls, that's kind of the name of the game. I mean, sometimes you have to be willing to ruffle some feathers to get things done, right? And if you're so worried about being found out, so worried about making the wrong move, it's going to be pretty hard to make those bold decisions. Mm -hmm. It's like imposter syndrome becomes this kind of self-imposed limitation, holding you back from your full potential. And it makes you wonder, how does that internal struggle affect the way leaders communicate? Because we talked about Kamala Harris and the word salad thing, but this has to be bigger than just her, right? Oh, for sure. It's way bigger than any one person. Because think about it, if you're constantly doubting your own expertise, if you're always questioning whether you're really qualified to be in the room, it's going to be pretty tough to communicate effectively. Because you need confidence to get your message across. Right. That feeling that you really believe in what you're saying. Absolutely. And I think that's something we see time and time again with effective leaders throughout history. They're often really great communicators. They know how to articulate their vision, how to inspire people, how to get everyone on the same page. But when you're battling imposter syndrome, it's hard to project that kind of confidence, that kind of authenticity. You're always holding back a little, af afraid to fully own your message. So it's like this vicious cycle, right? You doubt yourself, so you struggle to communicate effectively, which just makes you doubt yourself even more. Yeah. It's actually kind of heartbreaking when you think about it because these are people who have achieved incredible things, but they're still trapped in this internal battle with their own self-worth. And it really highlights how impactful our inner world can be, right? Like, we tend to think about leadership as this external thing, you know, being decisive, giving speeches, making big decisions. But so much of it is actually happening internally. The way we see ourselves, the way we talk to ourselves, that has a huge impact on how we show up as leaders. It's a good reminder that we're all human, even the people we put in positions of power. And maybe... The more we can acknowledge that, the more we can start to break down some of those barriers that prevent people, including ourselves, from reaching their full potential as leaders. Maybe that's the first step, right? Yeah. Just acknowledging that this is something so many of us struggle with, even the people who seem like they have it all figured out. Right. Like, even when we achieve those big things, there is still that little voice saying, yeah, but. Totally. Uh, mm. And it can be so isolating, you know? because it feels like everyone else has it figured out. Like you're the only one struggling with this. But the reality is it's way more common than we think. It's just that no one really talks about it. Wow, what a great place to wrap up. This has been such an eye-opening conversation about a topic that I think really resonates with so many of us. So to our listener out there, we hope this deep dive has given you something to think about, something to hold on to the next time you find yourself battling that imposter syndrome. Remember, you're not alone. And those feelings, they don't get to decide your worth. And until next time, keep asking those tough questions and keep diving deep.